anyway, on back to the basics. And we went through all seven of them. We looked at what uh, he's God and we're not. That's basic number one. Number two, God doesn't need us, but we desperately need him. Number three, what God demands, he supplies. Number four, what you seek, you find. Number five, active faith releases God's power. Y'all and number six, there is no growth without struggle. And then the last one was what God starts, he finishes. And boy, how I've needed these basics much in my life just here even recently. And God's been so good that I had the messages right where I needed. But when I got to basic number five, um, I only got so far into it and I had just forgot about that. And the Lord reminded me this week and I had a lot more in that message than what I gave, and I want to be able to continue that. And I want to say again, uh, whether you're uh, in the sanctuary or whether you're watching by live stream, that let's make sure that we treat this as church and and uh, listen and take notes and uh, set you know and allow God to speak to our hearts because I believe He wants to. Hebrews chapter number eleven, we know this chapter very well. The Bible said in verse number 1, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. And then if you go through this chapter, in fact, Hebrews 6, he said, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And we looked at the fact that with defining faith, there's no clearer instruction on faith than in Hebrews chapter 11. By faith, Abel, in verse 4. By faith, Enoch in verse 5. By faith, Noah in verse 7. By faith, Abraham in verse 8. By faith, Isaac in verse 20. By faith, Jacob in verse 21. By faith, Joseph in verse 22. By faith, Moses' parents in verse 23. By faith, Moses in verse 24. By faith, they, speaking of Israel, verse 29. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell in verse 30. By faith, Rahab uh, uh, did what God wanted her to do in verse 31. And he didn't even have time to mention, he said, the exploits of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel and the prophets in verse 32. And they, they and all the other heroes were, were lifted up for their faith. And then the Bible said in verse 36, others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. And we looked at how those that, that, that died instead of those that were stoned instead of got a miracle, their faith was no less than those that built the ark. Building the ark, coming out of Egypt, all those things was great faith. But God said it also took faith. Uh, for those to go through the trials and the storms that they went to in verse 36 through verse number 39, uh, verse 38, because 39 said, all these having obtained a good report through faith. Now, as we studied that list in, in chapter 11, three things stood out that we looked at. First of all, they're all joined by one common factor. What every one of these people did, whether they, uh, whether they succeeded or whether they died, whether they uh, had a miracle or whether they were persecuted, God said they all did it by faith. Second thing we looked at is living by faith often meant moving against the prevailing tide of your flesh or of what you want to do or what makes sense or even what other people may think you ought to do. And then thirdly, Hebrews 11 demonstrates that the life of faith is not a rarity. We can look at this list and it's easy to look at Enoch and Noah and Joseph and Moses and David and say, I could never do that. Down deep in our hearts we have believed a lie that the life of faith is restricted to just a few people. We think we could never qualify to have our names added to the list in Hebrews 11. But I remind you tonight that uh, the very reason this chapter is in the Bible is so that we would know that these were ordinary, ordinary men and women who did extraordinary things simply because they had faith in God. They're made of the same stuff as we are, and God showed us that. The life of faith is in within the reach of every believer. If we desire, we can live just like they did in the life of faith. And so uh, we looked at these three words as I closed the first part of the message when I dealt with it. I said, faith believes these three words, believe, see, 
and do. That's faith. Faith believes what others do not believe. Faith sees what others do not see. Faith does what others do not do. True faith is never passive. True faith moves us to act, to do, to try, to build, to attempt, to expand, to say no to sin and yes to righteousness, to say no to our fears and say yes to faith. True faith is never passive. And if you're going to have faith like we dealt with this morning, then you've got to go even if it's dark, even if it makes no sense, even if everything is working against you, you've got to by faith say, I believe God, I see what God wants to do, and I'm going to do what maybe others won't do, and I'm going to do all of that by faith faith. It's what compels you to step out and not know what you're stepping on. I'm saying to you and I, it's what causes you to fight a giant with five rocks and a slingshot. It's the thing that if God doesn't come through, you are sunk. And so that was faith defined. But then we see faith illustrated and we come to Hebrews 11. Look at verse number 24. The Bible said by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect under the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. What an illustration. Five words tell his story in these verses. Refused, chose, regarded, persevered, and saw. He said no to things because he chose to do something else. He made that choice because he regarded God's promises as true. He found the strength to endure 40 years of hardship in Midian because he saw him who was invisible. God lifts up Moses and said, Moses, seen that God was going to do something, believed that God was going to do something, and even though it took 40 years because he had seen him who was invisible, Moses said, I would rather suffer reproach and suffer affliction. I'd never be happy. I'd rather never be happy again. I'd rather never have joy. We know that's impossible, but that's what he's saying. He said, I know what God wants to do, and if it means live the rest of my life with against my emotions, against my feelings, Moses said, I would rather choose God. How did he do that? Faith. Faith. Everything hinges on that first word that I gave you out of them five words. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. That may not seem much like to us, may not seem like much to us, but that was a life changing decision for him. I remind you, she found him in the basket. She rescued him. She raised him. She received a, he, uh, he, she saw to it, he received a complete education in science and history and philosophy. It meant he was trained to be a leader of the nation. It meant he was raised in the lap of luxury. Hey, listen, some scholars suggest that in the days of, of the line of successors, it passed through the daughter, which means it's very possible Moses would have been the next Pharaoh of Egypt. Moses, Moses had everything that he wanted and everything that most people would give anything to have. He had power. He could have whatever he wanted. And listen, he, if he wanted it, he could have it. And here's the irony of it all. When he got to the height of his power, he gave it all up. He refused it. He relinquished it. It was not an easy decision to make, I'm sure, because he knew how the consequences, he knew what it was going to be involved, but it's as if he stood in front of the Egyptians and he said, you thought you knew me, you thought you understood me, but you didn't. I am not going the way of Egypt. I am not going to allow my life to be in sin. I'm a child of God. I am not choosing the wrong path. And if choosing the right path means that it's a reproach, if it means i got to suffer affliction, if if it means I never get to enjoy this again, then I would rather by faith choose God as I would choose my own way. That's what Moses was saying. Amen. And with that one act, Moses committed what we would call career suicide. He gave up the riches of Egypt. He gave up the pleasures of sin for a season in order he could, he could enjoy the motley band of Hebrews who were hated by the Egyptians. And he found the strength to endure the persecution because he saw him 
who was invisible. That's one of the most remarkable and revealing statements in the entire Bible. It appears to be an impossibility. How do you see an invisible person? The whole point of being invisible is so that no one can see you. If you can be seen, then you are not invisible. Yet the Bible said he saw him who was invisible. God was invisible, yet Moses saw him. How? Two words, by faith. Moses had faith, and his faith gave him sight, and he saw the God who is invisible. The Egyptians didn't see, but Moses did. That's what faith can do. So what did Moses exactly see, preacher? The Bible says he was looking ahead. He was had respect under the recompense of the reward in verse 26. That means he was looking ahead to his reward. Let me explain it this way. Moses knew there were two worlds that he could choose to live by. He knew there was two set of values that he could live by. He could live by his flesh, his emotions, what he wanted. There was the world that he could see. That was the Egyptian world. The world of the senses. The world of emotion. The world of affections. The world of his will. And of money. And of power. And of sex. And of pleasure. And of fame. And of self-gratification. The world of military power and brute force. That was the world where Pharaoh was king. That was the world Moses was in. And he had every bit of it at his fingertips. He was a part of every of I'm sure he felt happy as servants waited on him. I'm sure he felt glad as Pharaoh uh, talked to him about maybe taking over one day. I'm sure Moses thought, I can be happy here. I can be satisfied here. He knew that there was two worlds that he had to choose from. And as far as the Egyptians knew, that was the only world there was. The gods they worship were no more than an extension of their perverted values. But there was and is another world. And that's the invisible world. That's the spirit world world. That's the realm of God. That's the realm of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the realm of the saints. It's a world that's ruled by righteousness and entered into by the grace of God. And here's the kicker. Those who live for that world of Egypt, those who decide, I'm going to choose the pleasures of sin. Hey, they may live 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, maybe even 90 years. And they may have a lot of wealth and power and fame. But I'm going to tell you something. Had Moses, when they die, hey listen, all that they live for, die with them, and God said there's pleasure in sin for a season and I'm telling you that season runs out and when it runs out it's nothing but heartache, it's nothing but hurt it's nothing but heaviness, I'm telling you the Bible said that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the ways of destruction death, and I'm telling you tonight hey Moses could have uh, could have chose that route, but he said I would rather suffer affliction with the people of God do we understand what he's saying? Moses said, I would rather live in misery the rest of my life and know I'm doing what God wants because there's a promise out there for me. As I would give in to my pleasure and my sin and my thoughts and have everything I want. Had Moses give in to Egypt and stayed there, we'd have never heard about him. We'd have never read about him. He'd have never been important. He'd have never made an eternal difference. He would have just been somebody else that was in Egypt. Some other man would have took his place. God's always got a man. God's always got a person. He chooses to use us. He don't have to use us. And Moses would have just been a blip in the line of Egypt. But because he chose, because he refused to allow his will and emotions and thoughts, and because he chose and refused to allow his thinking to control him, Moses becomes one of the greatest men of your Bible and led one of the greatest deliverances that you'll ever read about. But he didn't see all that when he made his choice. He had to choose knowing I may never be what I was there. I may never get to enjoy what I enjoyed there. I may never get to become what I was able to become there. But this is right. I know God's there. I know his promise is there. And Moses clung to God. He saw him who is invisible. And so my question tonight is in which world do you want to make a mark? If you want to make it big in Egypt, good luck. You'll have your reward, but you ain't going to be happy when you get it. If you want to live for the next world, you can, but it may cost you something in the meantime. And God said, I want you to trust me by faith. I want to return to that statement, Moses saw him who is invisible. May I say faith sees what is really there even though others see nothing at all. Faith believes what is true even though others don't believe it at all. By faith, we see reality. 
which means we see beyond the world around us. But that concept should not be strange to any of us. The most beloved hymn in the world, Amazing Grace, said, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. By faith, we see what others do not see. You ever looked at one of those 3D picture things in them books that contain them hidden images? When you look at the picture... All you see is wavy lines or dots or marbles or stars or pieces of fruit. But if you look at the picture up close, throw your eyes out of focus, turn turn your head a bit cockeyed, hold your mouth exactly right, suddenly out jumps Mozart's head or a dog or a dancing girl or a giant bird. And since I have less than perfect eyesight, I have trouble seeing those 3D pictures. Usually the only thing I see is a bunch of lines or something that looks vaguely like a head of a cabbage. And to add to my aggravation, my wife, Leanne, can almost always see the hidden image. But just because I can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. The hidden image is there whether I see it or not. And can I tell you it's the same way with the life of faith. The hidden world of the eternal reality is there whether we see it by not, whether we understand it or not. And by faith we see it even though the people of the world do not, even though sometimes Christian people don't see it. God said we see it. Listen to the statement. Faith sees the impossible, believes the incredible, and receives the, I'm sorry, faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. Does that not fit the life of Moses? But can I say God said that it's with us and it starts and it's for us but it starts with seeing the invisible. If we can do that this morning I preached on Moses Moses had no idea what that stick was going to do, that rod was going to do and then when God turned into a serpent and said pick it up he had no idea what was going to happen but he seen the invisible, he trusted God and look what God did. I'm saying to you and I, if we can do, if we can see the invisible, then we'll be able to believe the incredible. And in God's time, not ours, we will receive the impossible. And then I want you to notice, thirdly, we see not only faith to find and faith illustrated, but notice faith applied. There's three important conclusions that I want to uh, make about the nature of faith. First of all, faith is not a feeling, but a conscious choice to believe what God has said. Now, this message was ready several weeks ago, several weeks ago, whenever I preached message number five. And I've talked to a few people about faith, and I'm not re-preaching to you. I'm just telling you God already had this in the message and I didn't get to it and he said do it tonight and I had no idea what all was going to come up but I believe it's very fitting. Faith is not a feeling but a conscious choice to believe what God has said. If you're waiting to feel faith, it's not going to happen. If you're waiting to feel good about exercising faith, it's not going to happen. I've exercised faith in a couple areas in the last couple days, scared me to death to do it. God said do it in spite of my feelings in spite of my fear in spite of my frustrations in spite spite of me thinking it's a serpent it's the wrong thing to do by faith I stepped out and I did what God said do why because faith is not a feeling but a conscious choice to believe what God has said you will never progress in your spiritual life as long as you and I live in the land of our feelings if Noah had waited until he felt like building an ark he might have never laid the first piece of gopher wood If Joshua had waited till it felt good and right to march around Jericho, those walls might still be standing. Listen to me. Feelings are important. They are God-given, but they are not the basis of true faith. When you listen... Uh, Listen, I'm saying to you and I, you and the moments that you get into where there's problems or troubles and you've got to make a choice. Hey, listen, you, you must consciously choose to believe that God is who he said he is, that God will do what he said he's going to do. And you'll probably have to make that choice a hundred times a day. Faith chooses, then it acts, and then the feelings follow. We want it opposite. We want our follows, our feelings to feel good about it. Act and then call that faith. That's not the way it works. God says to you and I, you got to step out by faith. You got to do it. But preacher, God's not answered that yet. I don't care. 
Moses wandered around in Midian for 40 years and he knew God had promised him he was going to deliver him. Moses kept sheep for his father-in-law. Moses was stuck on the backside of the desert. He went from Pharaoh's house to the heat and the cold and being a shepherd, which was the most despised position to an Egyptian. And Moses said, I'd rather do this and wait on what God's promised. Moses become a greater leader than any Pharaoh could have ever come. Pharaoh winds up dying in that Red Sea. Moses becomes one of the greatest men walking in shoe leather ever. Why? Because he felt it? No, he didn't feel it. Because he by faith made the decision to do what God said do. And when he made that decision, when he chose, he acted on it. Free tribe chosen has not got no better. Act on it. But I don't feel like it. God didn't ask you about your feelings. He said, by faith, do what you're supposed to do. And the feelings may take a while, but they will come. They will come. Faith is not a feeling, but it's a conscious choice to believe what God has said. Secondly, faith acts even in the face of doubt and opposition. Faith acts even in the face of doubt and opposition. If we wait until all the circumstances are in our favor, we're probably going to wait forever. If we wait for everything to feel right, look right, be right, the circumstances to be on our side, you're never going to act in faith. Faith acts even in the face of doubt and opposition. David didn't wait for Goliath to develop arthritis and get old. David didn't wait for Goliath to get handicapped in another war and then go after him. He trusted God and he walked down in that valley and he faced a giant that should have pulverized him and God gave him the victory. Why? Because David was something? No, because God was something. I'm saying to you and I this evening, if we wait for our doubts to disappear, well, preacher, I'm going to act. I just got to get these doubts settled and I got to just God to give me assurance and I just got to get God to give me this and give me that. If we wait for our doubts to disappear, we're going to wait a long time. Someone said faith is belief plus unbelief and acting on the belief part. And that's exactly right. Faith is belief plus unbelief but choosing to act on the belief part. Sooner or later, we're going to have to act on the belief part. Abraham did. Moses did. Samuel did. All the heroes of the Bible acted on the belief part. And I'm going to tell you something. Well, preacher, I can't do that. Yes, you can because it's a choice and all of us can make choices. You may not want to make the choice. You may be scared to make the choice. You may feel too weak to make the choice. You may, you may be fighting making the choice. But every one of us can make a choice. I'm going to believe God and trust God and trust that once I believe Him, I'm going to act. And when I act, all that I'm looking for is going to follow. I'm saying to you and I, if you say, well, preacher, what if you face that proverbial leap of faith? I, I can get to the edge, but I just don't know if I can jump. I can dangle my feet in the water, but I just don't know if I can get on that diving board and jump off. What about the proverbial leap of faith? What then? Well, one person said, when you come to the end of everything you know, and you're faced with the darkness of the unknown, Faith is knowing one of two things will happen when you take that leap. Either there'll be something solid for you to stand on, or you'll be taught how to fly. You understand what that quote's saying? Preacher, I can get to the edge, I just can't make myself jump. That's fear. That's lack of faith. That's not trusting God. Over the years, I've had several kids at different times, whether they be in a tree and couldn't get down, whether they be up uh, somewhere high and then was scared to come back down the stairs, and I would say to them, jump. No, Daddy, I'm scared. Jump. Daddy, I'm scared. Jump. I will catch you. I'm right here. You're going to fall right into my arms. I'm not going to let anything happen to you. And eventually, they jumped. Not because they wasn't scared, not because it felt good, not because they didn't like the tree they were in, but because they knew enough and had enough faith in dad to say dad's going to catch me is it possible I could have dropped him sure it is and if we can put that kind of faith in people how can we not put extra faith in a God that will never drop you never make a mistake never let you down never fail you in any area see when we get to that edge and we refuse to jump 
call it what you want, you don't believe God. Well, I don't know what's going to be there when I jump. If God's saying jump, let me tell you what's going to be there. Either solid footing or he's fixing to let you learn to fly. He's not going to leave you alone. He's not going to not honor his word. And I'm saying to you and I, faith is not a feeling. It's a conscious choice to believe what God has said. Faith acts even in the doubt and the opposition. And then may I say, thirdly, faith sees what others do not see. Faith sees what others do not see. It amazes me when people, even people who are just only related to church or God, say at the death of a loved one, well, we know our loved one's with God. We know they're better off. We know they're in heaven. Hey, that's not just wishful thinking. That's not just phantom reality. That's not just a broken heart hoping for the best. That's faith. And that's the declaration of what Moses discovered thousands of years ago. We are not blind. Our eyes have been opened. We see what has happened. We see beyond it to the eternal realities that cannot be taken away. The pain of death cannot cancel the promises of God. And I'm saying to you and I, you and I that are saved, enlightened by the Spirit of God, listen, my, one of my favorite definitions of faith comes from someone that said, faith means believing in advance what will only make sense in reverse. Let me say that again. Faith means believing in advance what will only make sense in reverse. In other words, you've got to step out by faith and get on this side of whatever you're scared of and you're going to look back and it's going to make perfect sense. But you're not going to find that till you take that leap of faith. Faith means believing in advance what will only make sense in reverse. So many things in this life make no sense to us. I imagine every person here has a few very deep and personal questions that defy any human answer that you can get. We want to know why things happen the way they do. We want to know why things couldn't have happened some other way. We want to know why God allowed this to happen or why God let this happen or why did God not stop this or why did God start that. And, and we, 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 look at, we, we want to know why couldn't things have happened some other way. It would be wrong to say that faith provides all those answers. It doesn't. Maybe, perhaps, in heaven we'll fully understand, or in heaven our desire will be to know what to know will be transformed by our vision of the Lord. But I'm saying tonight, by faith, we see things that are invisible to others, and by faith, we believe in advance those things that, may, that right now make no sense. But one day will make perfect sense because we'll view them in reverse. The world says seeing is believing. God says believing is seeing. We believe, therefore we see. One final thing and I'll be done. Biblical faith is never faith in faith. As if we're believing in our own powers of logic or self-persuasion. Faith can never be stronger than the object on which it rests. And since our faith rests on the Lord Jesus Christ, the essence of faith is following Him wherever He leads. There's a little acrostic that's been used for years and years, forsaking all, I take him. It means that I am going to go with God and I'm going to trust God, not because I just feel like I should, but God has given promises. Listen, if God's give you a promise in that Bible, if he don't fulfill it, he becomes a liar. And the Bible said, let God be true and every man a liar. He's never broke one of his promises. But here's the question. Will you believe it? Well, preacher, I'm trying. I'm working on it. No, it's a choice. Your faith in the promise depends on how much importance and respect you have for the person. God's never broke a promise. He's never lied. He's never done nothing wrong. And if God gives us promises out of this book and in our spirit, and we don't believe them, we're spitting in his face. We're saying, God, I don't think you're strong enough to make that come about. Now, we would never say that vocally. But when we don't choose to believe and wait on the seeing to come afterwards, that's what we're saying. Listen, following Christ can be risky business. Preacher, is everything going to work out right if I follow Jesus? Well, it depends on what you mean work out right. I know it's going to work out the best. But I've always believed I'm in much more danger outside the will of God than I am in the will of God. People said, how can you go to Papua New Guinea? Because I was safer there 
Me and my wife were safer there in the will of God than we'd have been here out. And listen, some of you tonight, you're scared of taking that step in the will of God. You're fearful. You're afraid. Well, I don't feel it. I don't, I don't see it. I'm scared. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Listen to me. Down in your heart, you know good and well to be out of his will is more dangerous and scary and more destructive than to be right where he's told you to be. People looked at me and my wife like we were crazy. How can you do that? But, and we were. We were safer in the will of God there than we'd have been staying right near the house. I'm saying to you and I, the truth is, those who live by faith, you can be rest assured of three things. You're going to see great triumphs and you're going to endure great trials. You're going to see great triumphs, but you are going to endure some great trials. You're going to be misunderstood by many people. And thirdly, you're going to be glad that you did what you did when it's all over, on this side and the other. Our call is not to understand what God is doing. Our call is to follow Christ wherever He leads, whatever it costs, regardless whether I understand or not. And the word of Christ is the same to every one of us. Come, follow me. Try it out. Come to me. Put your life in my hands. Trust me is what God is saying. Let me show you what I can do. And what we say is, no, I think I can be happier. I can be healthier. I can be better doing it my way, God, than throwing myself into your arms. It's a choice. It's a decision. To be a disciple of Christ means I get on the road that Jesus is on and I follow it wherever it takes me. No guarantees, no deals, no special promises. I simply walk that road every day following in His steps and not afraid to follow. And I'll ne you'll never regret starting down the road of Christ. You'll only regret that you waited so long to do it. I want to ask you tonight, are you ready to follow Jesus wherever he leads? That's all he wants. Well, what if Jesus asks me to do something I don't want to do or I can't do? Oh, he is going to ask you to do something you probably don't want to do. And he will ask you things maybe you can't do. If he only asked you to do something you could do, you wouldn't need him. If he only asked you to do something you wanted to do, you still wouldn't need him. But faith is when he asks us to do something we can't do and his promise to us is this. If you decide to follow him, he will ask you to do the impossible and then he will help you do it. And when you get to that side of it, you'll look back and never regret that you did it. Our part is simply to take the next step. Just take the next step God puts in front of you. You don't have to see the whole plan. You don't have to feel good about it. You don't even have to see 10 steps down the road. Faith means taking the next step in front of you and leaving the rest in the hands of God. Faith is the law of the kingdom. And active faith releases God's power. Every blessing that God has is available to people who put their faith to work moment by moment day by day, little steps at a time. By faith Noah. By faith Abraham. By faith Moses. I wonder tonight, can any other names be added to that list? By faith Josh. By faith Brian. By faith Joanna. By faith Leanne. May God give us the courage to follow the Lord in spite of every reason not to step out by faith so our names can be added to that long list of men and women who lived and died by faith. One of the basics of successfully living the Christian life is when it's dark and you can't see stepping out. You ever been in one of these museums or kids places and they have one of these dark hole things and they want you to stick your hand in it and you don't know what's in there, what's going to happen, am I going to get bit, is a trap going to go off, am I going to get electrocuted, am I going to stick my hand in something nasty? 
It's amazing how many people will, oh, I'll do it. Faith. Well, can I tell you what God is asking of us tonight? What he has on the other side ain't sticky, it ain't nasty, it ain't going to hurt us, it ain't going to sting us, it ain't going to negative affect us. Oh, sure, Moser, Moses suffered affliction. He had to leave all the prominence and popularity and power of Egypt. All the pleasures. Oh, he was enjoying it. And he left it, and it didn't feel good. The Israelites turned on him. I'm not happy, God. The people that I'm supposed to deliver won't even, won't even respond the way I want them to. Oh, he wasn't happy. He left it, but he wasn't happy. And then, because he kills an Egyptian soldier that was messing with them Israelites, he has to run from Pharaoh, and he winds up as a shepherd for 40 years. But I guarantee you, if we talked to Moses today, said, Moses, did you make the right choice? Oh, yes, he'd say, I made the right choice. Moses, was it an easy choice? No. Moses, did it cost you? Yeah. Moses, was it scary? Yes. Moses, did you feel like what you had was better than what you're going to get? Yeah. But I knew all that to be false because I knew God had had me promised for something better. He told my parents, and I knew God had something for me. And so though the path looked worse, and though it didn't look as fun, and it didn't look as great as what I had here, I knew that was the will of God, and I knew that's what I was supposed to do. And by faith, I seen Him who was invisible. And it's an amazing thing He would tell us when I took that journey. God let me part the Red Sea. God let me bring ten plagues. God let me bring water out of a rock. God let me lead millions of people. Why, Moses? I just trusted him. We got this idea that faith is easy. And it's not hard to make a choice. The hard part is you've got to put your will, your affections, and your emotions aside and your fears and your failings and say, God, you gave me a promise. Do you have any promises from God? Then you need to march towards those promises no matter what. And what I can promise you is everything that you're looking for, God has. But you got to take one step at a time. Even if everything in you says, this don't feel right. You got to march towards Him who is invisible. Do you see Him tonight? Is He prodding you, pointing you in a direction? God all day has had me on faith. I didn't plan it that way, but God wanted it that way. And I believe He's talking to many tonight that just need to say, in spite of my doubts, my dreads, my darkness, I'm stepping God's direction, no matter what. And it may not feel good at first, but what I can promise you is every step, His direction, the fruits of the Spirit, the joy of God, the peace of God, and the power of God is going to come in your life. Or you can go after pleasure. You can go after what you think is going to be better for you. You can know better than God. I'm going to tell you what you're going to wind up. You're going to wind up in destruction and death and misery. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. I'm amazed at how God has had these messages just at the right time. God has challenged my faith for the last couple of days, and I know he's challenged others' faith. And I want to ask you tonight, are you willing just to take that step? God, I'm scared. The Lord will. What dad had a kid scared that he wouldn't reach out and say, I got you, trust me. I believe the God of heaven is looking out over the portals of glory tonight. And he's looking down at some Christians and he's saying, would you trust me? Hey, child, I got you. It's okay. Just jump. I'm not going to drop you. I'm not going to let you fall. I know you're scared. I know it don't feel right. I know it don't look good. 
But child, I promised you everything's going to be okay. Just trust me. Well, as soon as I feel okay, I'll do that, preacher. That's not faith. That's living in feelings. And the problem with that is if your feelings drive you to faith, your feelings will drive you from faith. You have to step in faith first and a trust and teach your feelings. You're not leading me. You're going to follow my faith. Preacher, but it ain't happening. If you've never lived that way, it's going to take everything you've got to, to, to deny your feelings and your fears and say, I'm going to go God's way no matter what. But what I can promise you is your feelings will come. Moses was very happy he picked that rod back up, that snake up. And I don't know anyone that's been scared that took the step and leap of faith with God that said later, I regret that. But I can name hundreds that said, I'm too scared, I'm not doing it, I'm not going God's way, I want to be happy, I want to be fine. And I thought on many today, they're miserable. They're miserable. Why? Because there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. It's not going to work out the way you think it is. Moses could have had Egypt. He would have died with all the other Egyptians. Not only would he have died, he would have been irrelevant. He would have done nothing other than just been a name on a list. But by choosing God, God used Moses in a mighty way. God can do the same for you. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Would you let God speak to your heart tonight? Father, Lord, this message was ready weeks ago. It's no accident. It's no mistake. It's no happenstance that you wanted it preached tonight. When you laid it on my heart earlier in the week, I even shared my, with my wife that I was going to be dealing with this. I had no idea the circumstances and conditions that would be around it. And God, I know you want to use it. And I know you're speaking. I just pray we're all listening. Lord, you didn't preach this just to one or two or three or four. You preached it to a church. And I pray our people, God, would figure out where they're at in this process of faith. And Lord, use the message, I pray. I'm a nobody, I'm a nothing. But Spirit of God, take the message and seal it to our hearts and anoint it to our ears. And change us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for being in the service. I hope God spoke to your heart. Thank you for watching. Let's pray that the Lord keep us safe. We'll see you Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock. Lord willing, devotions will be up this week. You pray the Lord give me direction in those. Looking forward to what God's going to do. We'll see you in the devotion, or the, the short devotions in the morning. And then, of course, church, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. God bless you. You have a good evening.